Turn with me this afternoon uh, to start with to the book of Acts, chapter number 14. Acts chapter number 14. I stated this morning that just throughout my study of really preparing for my afternoon message of looking at the book of Philippians, the Holy Spirit caused me to look at that phrase in the Lord and just... Uh, I looked at those three instances, but I just got curious to see if there were other times in Scripture that that word in the Lord was used and things that we might have, might have as a Christian because of being in the Lord and began to find other things. And so uh, the Holy Spirit just showed me a few others. And so I want to preach those to us today uh, as a, hopefully a help to us in the day and time in which we live. Acts chapter 14, look at verse number 3 with me. Acts chapter 14, verse number 3. The Bible says, Long time, therefore of both they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you this afternoon, we're grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to once again gather together in your house to worship you. Father, I pray that you'd be with those that couldn't be here today just due to sicknesses and uh, ailments of the flesh. I pray, Father, that you would strengthen them. Father, get them uh, on their feet again. And Father, just continue to touch them. Father, just uh, watch over our church. Grow us and uh, help us to be what you would have us to be. And we'll give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory for this today. For it's in thy name we pray. Amen. 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 As I thought about this mess, the message earlier this day and this morning, and thought about our standing in Christ and being of the same mind in Christ and then rejoicing in Christ, and as I begin to carry on that, I, I believe that a lot of what we'll see today is as a result of those very things today and some things that oftentimes that we need help with I know in my own life personally uh, these are some things that I, I need help with I want you to notice first of all with me here in Acts chapter 14 verse number 3 that one of the things that we have in the Lord is the thought of boldness in the Lord and the Bible says that they could speak boldly in the Lord and you know in the day and time in which we live we need some boldness to to stand for right Amen. we need a boldness to stand against wrongdoing to stand against wickedness and so, frankly you know we even need boldness just to be able to talk to people Amen. and to be the witness that we need to be and you know oftentimes we I don't know the Bible instructs us to be a witness, instructs us to have that testimony, and yet oftentimes things deter us from that if we're not careful. And we just need a boldness in God, and that we need the Lord to help us with a boldness to speak clearly the things that that God would have us to speak. And as as a preacher, I, I need to have the boldness to to stand and preach all aspects of the Word of God. I mean. Uh, those that have been in church for any length of time, we understand that not all of what the Bible has for us is is easy to hear, is it? I mean, you know, um, it, 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 I, I, I'll be honest, it's, it's easy to stand up and preach on the love of God. It's easy to stand up and preach on the grace of God. It's easy to stand up and preach on the goodness of God. It's easy to stand up and preach on the mercy of God. But when I come to a passage where it starts to get into some specific sense, those are messages that are often harder to preach because I know sometimes it might upset people. It might offend people. It might hurt people, if you will. And so in those regards, I need that boldness uh, from God, boldness in the Lord, just to, to preach the Word of God as straight as what God's Word is to us. Uh, we looked this morning that God's Word is very clear. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about where God stands on some issues. Uh, you know, in our world today, there are some issues where individuals are divided in. Individuals are divided in the issue of homosexuality, whether it's a sin or whether it's an honest sin. God's Word clearly lays out for us that homosexuality is a sin. 
And we've got to be willing to stand up and uh, preach against it and have the boldness against it. And so we understand here that the, the, the apostles are asking God to give them boldness. And it says, long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. The reason they could stand and preach boldly, the reason they could stand and speak, thus saith the Lord boldly, was because of their relationship to God. And so the, when we think about in the Lord, there is boldness in the Lord. Look with me at the book of Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1. You do not have to hold your place in the book of Acts. We will not be coming back there. We'll be looking at a lot of verses this afternoon. Philippians chapter number 1 and in verse number 14. The Bible says here, And many of the brethren in the Lord... So notice that phrase again, in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And so as a, as a Christian, as a preacher of the gospel, we are to stand and preach and to speak the word of God without fear. Thus saith the Lord. Here's Amen. what the Lord says. Give us that boldness to stand for right, to stand against wrong, and we can do that in the Lord. Look with me at Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse number 19. So as we're just looking at boldness that we have in the Lord, the Bible says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Notice again verse number 20. We as, as Christians, the Bible says that we are ambassadors in bonds to speak the gospel. That is just simply saying that that is our duty as a Christian, that is our obligation, that is our responsibility, that we ought to speak the word of God boldly and clearly to those around us. And so we understand today that in God, in the Lord, there is boldness. In the day and time in which we live, if you want to be bold, then ask God to help you. Because I believe God will give you the boldness. God will give you the ability to stand for right, Amen. to stand against wrong. He wants you to be bold according to what we read in his word. Look with me at Psalm chapter number 73. Psalm chapter 73 this afternoon. Psalm chapter 73, look at verse 28. Not only is there boldness in the Lord, but here in Psalm 73, 28, we see another thing that we have in the Lord. The Bible says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Man, we can, I'm thankful today we can have trust in God. And that there's trust in the Lord. The Bible speaks about that we can always trust in the Lord to know that He's going to take care of us. And, you know, in, in, in the day and time and things around us, there's not a lot of trust in some things, is there, anymore? And, you know, you, you look at certain aspects of our life, and there's just not a whole lot of trust in, in things. And, you know, you, 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 you can lose trust in people. And that's, that, that's sad that that happens, but that's just the reality of life. You, you lose trust in people, and, and you, you think somebody's honest, and you find out that maybe they're not so honest as you first thought that person to be. And, you know, sometimes you, you learn that through experiences and through hardships that you go through with that. But I'm reminded today that the Bible says that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And 
I'm thankful that we can always trust in God. Amen. That I can put my full trust in God knowing that He's going to take care of me. You know, we, we, we put trust in some things that we don't really think about. And I know I've used this illustration. When, when a person comes into the church, they, they just put trust in these pews that they're going to hold you up. I don't. I, I, I never have yet in the two years I've been here ever seen any one of you walk up to that pew and start pushing on it or start examining that pew before you sit down. You just sit down thinking that that pew is going to hold you up. You have, you have trust in that pew. Isn't that the way it is with God? We just kind of trust Him that He's going to take care of us. I, I get in my vehicle and, and I trust that when I turn the key, the ignition starts up. You know, on an occasion, sometimes you go out, you do that, and you don't get that, do you? You get the click, 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 and you know your battery's dead or something has happened. And there's just not trust in a lot of things, but I'm thankful that there's trust in God and that I can fully trust in the Lord. I, I like Proverbs chapter number 3, verses 5 and 6, and verses that we've all heard since we were a kid. And Sunday school teachers have taught us these verses. Preachers have preached on them. And the Bible says in, in, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Why do we not want to lean unto our own understanding? Because our own understanding changes. Our own understanding is dictated by the events or the emotions that we're going through. You know, you're you're having a rough day. Doesn't that kind of affect every ounce of you? You know, but aren't you thankful that putting trust in God, it never changes. It's always the same. And so the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. We can trust in the Lord today. We can put full confidence in Him. Look with me over at Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2 this afternoon. Look at verse number 19. Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 19. Notice what the Apostle Paul says here. He says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. And I'm thankful that there's trust in the Lord, that there's trust in God, that we can have, that, that trust is found in Jesus Christ. And uh, I mentioned, I believe it was Wednesday night or maybe last Sunday, where, you know, I've had jobs in my life where I thought those jobs were going to be lasting jobs. But then through hardships and, and trials that our, my employer went through, they had to start laying people off. And my name got drawn. And, and I got let go. And, you know, I thought I was in a good, solid job. There wasn't much trust there in that job. You know, you, you, I, I was trying to trust in that job to provide, but it didn't always happen because it can let you down. You know, things let us down from time to time, but the Lord never lets us down. Amen. The Lord always keeps His promise. The Lord's always good to us, and He never discourages me. He never discourages us, does He? He's always true to His Word. And so we see that we have boldness in the Lord, and we also have trust in the Lord as well. Look with me at Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter 5, as we look at the third thing that we have in the Lord, or that we are in the Lord today. Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse number 8. The Bible says, For ye were sometimes darkness... But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. The Bible says that we used to be darkness, but now are we light. In the Lord Jesus Christ, because of Jesus Christ, we are now light in Him. And we have light, and we are light because of being in Him. And so the Bible talks about being light. It's interesting, though. As I began to look at that, I, a verse came into my mind, and it was Matthew chapter 5. We're going to go there in just a minute. I don't want you to, if you want to turn there and hold your place, you're more than welcome to do that. I was 
I thought about that verse, and so I jotted it down. But then as I began to look a little bit deeper into that word light in Scripture, I came across another verse. And it's interesting that, look with me at John chapter number 8, first of all. And then we'll go over to Matthew chapter 5. John chapter number 8, look with me at verse number 12. John chapter 8, verse number 12. And then once we read this, we'll go over to Matthew chapter number 5 and look at verses 13 through verse number 16. John chapter number 8, verse number 12 says this. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, So we understand that Jesus is speaking here. He says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So Jesus says that he is the light of the world. The verse I was thinking about was Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Verse through, through verse 16. Where the Bible says in verse 13 of Matthew 5. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor. Wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. But to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now notice these words in verse 14. John 8. Jesus said he was the light of the world. Did he not? But yet here in Matthew 5, 14, Jesus is now speaking to us and says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We may look at that and say, well, well, God contradicted himself. No, he didn't. Jesus Christ is the true light. He has now given you and I the responsibility as he went away to be the light to a lost and a dying world. He has directed that responsibility, I believe, to, to us. Because according to Ephesians 5, 8, he tells us that we were once in darkness. We were once darkness, but now are we light in who? In the Lord. The reason we can be light is because we're, in, we're plugged into the true light, which is Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the light. And uh, he is the light that lights all men's path. And so we, we could kind of reference ourselves to being a solar light. The closer we get to Jesus, the brighter we shine. The closer we get to the true light, the brighter our light shines in this world. Matthew tells us, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are to shine our lights into a lost and a dying world. We're to let our light so shine before men. We're to be a light to those around us. We're to be a testimony to those around us. And, you know, people shouldn't have to wonder if we're a Christian. They should just be able to look at us and know that there's something different about us, that there's something reflecting off of us. There, there should be a glow about us, if you would. That, you know, just that, that glow. We, uh, we have solar lights on the church signs, and, well, at least we did. I kept pulling them up and not replacing them. So uh, we, we did have solar lights, I'll put it that way. And uh, every time I mow, I pull them up so I don't break them off, and then I forget to put them back. And so... I, I know I know out here we have a couple. I, I guess they work. I, I haven't been by here at night to really look much. But you know what those lights do if there's not much sun shining? They don't shine very bright. They're kind of a dull look. They don't really ref, they don't really slot up that sign like we would hope to because they haven't gotten the, the, the light of, of the sun that day. And, you know, oftentimes it's the very same in our lives when, when we don't spend time with God, when we don't get in God's Word, and we don't allow the, the, the true light of Jesus Christ to power us up, if you would, we begin to diminish a little bit in our testimony. We begin to diminish in our, in our life, and we begin to diminish in our light, and our light then begins to start being hid. 
to those around us. And the Bible says, let your light so shine before men. And that's a, that's a great responsibility, is it not? For a child of God to let our light shine, to be willing to let others see us. You know, as a Christian, I used to always reference myself in this regard because I don't know, you know, growing up in a preacher's home, everything that happens, I used to always tell Barbie, and Barbie and I used to always talk about this, that I always felt like, and I always feel like in my life, that I'm living in a fishbowl. You know kind of how a fishbowl is? It's viewable from all sides. There's, I mean, you know, front, back, or the sides. You can view into that fishbowl. Is not that how the Christian life is? I mean, we live in a fishbowl. Our lives are on display for others to see. As a pastor, my life is on display. My, my the things that I do, my, you know, and as a as a family, at, you know, growing up in a preacher's home, everything that happened, you know, if I made a mistake, oh, can you believe that the preacher's kid did that? I'm human, just like we all are. We all make mistakes, but you know, sometimes I felt like. I lived in a fishbowl. While sometimes as a kid I didn't like that, I understand the truth of how true that is, biblically speaking. In, that, in this lot of talking about we are the light of the world, our lives are to be seen. Our lives, the Christian faith, our Christian faith is to be made known in the world. We're not to hide it. We're to publicly talk about it. We're to publicly make it known. We're to publicly voice it and to demonstrate it in the days and time in which we live. You know, there's a lot of demonstrations going on right now. There's demonstrations going on for Black Lives Matter. There's demonstrations going on for all sorts of stuff right now. Why is there not why are we not out demonstrating our faith like we should? I know of individuals who have what they call roadside ministries. And they'll stand out on the corners of different streets and bigger cities and they'll hold up signs that say stuff like, Jesus loves you, you are a sinner, and uh, get saved today, and all that kind of stuff. And man, what a, what a great tool. You know what they're doing? They're being a light to that. Do every, do, does everybody that pass by like to see that? No, absolutely not. But you know what they're doing? They're being a light to a community. Just a simple tool, a simple thing that they're doing just being a light. And then let me show you this one today. Look with me at Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You ever feel weak spiritually? Yeah, I think we, we all do from time to time. You ever come to a place maybe in churches where you just kind of wanted to quit going, give in? I pray you haven't, but... I know I've been there. I was there one of the first churches I was a youth director at. I wanted to give in. Quit going. I got weak. Spiritually speaking. But you know, I'm reminded of the fact that if we'll just get in the Lord, we can find strength. He'll pick us up. He'll renew us. Remember what I what it says in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You need some renewing in your Christian life? Get close to God. Get a get in the Lord a little bit deeper. Get grow 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 closer to Him. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his mind. And plug into Jesus Christ. Get that recharging if you would. Most of us have a cell phone. Whether a, a smartphone or, a, you know, those cell phones have to be recharged, do they not? They don't last all the time. 
Mine usually uh, every night I plug it in and I recharge it. I've got an Apple Watch that I have to recharge from time to time. I got to plug it into a power source so I can re re renew the battery. You know that's what we need in our spiritual lives as well. We get run down by the the, the cares of this world. We get ran run down by the things that we see. Last night at Walmart, we were closing and cleaning up, and there were some guys, some of the stalkers in another section, had a radio going, and they were listening to music, and you couldn't even hardly hear the music, or didn't want to listen to the music, because every other word that came out of the, the musician's mouth was a four-letter word that I can't say behind the pulpit, or that I wouldn't say anyway, period. And it was just atrocious. I, I, I didn't go over and say anything. I wish I probably should have said, man, can y'all turn that down? I don't like listening to that. You know? But it's it's atrocious. You know, being around that any length of time, you know, that, that, that can weigh on you. That, that, that can, you know, push you down and discourage you if you're not careful. We just need to be renewed. That's why I'm still. That's why I still like having a Wednesday night service. I know Brother Bob. A lot of times when he would pray, he would pray about you know on when he would ask pray for the Wednesday night service. He'd say thank you for allowing us this opportunity to to come in in midweek and get recharged up again. That's kind of what it feels like. Like it's a. I mean, you've got church Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, and then where are we back into? We're back into the, the world again, and most of us are out in it, and you listen to all the stuff that you do, you, you watch the news, do this, do that, and man, it just beats down on you, and then you come Wednesday, and we get to get around God's people again. I'm not around those worldly influences anymore, those worldly people. I'm around God's people, those people I love, those people that rejuvenate me and energize me and then we get plugged into the word of God again for a midweek service and you know what that kind of does it kind of just gives you a jolt of energy to get through to a Sunday again and then Sunday rolls around you get in here and kind of get plugged in again if you would and uh, uh, you know it's it's kind of like nowadays they've got cars that are those electric cars that you got to plug them in I've always thought those were intriguing but I'm always afraid that I don't know how far you could go. You know, I've, I've always wanted to get one, but I don't know if I could drive from, from Rio Doso to Mansfield to see my parents on a full charge. I just don't know. I might have to stop somewhere and, you know, plug it in. I know of a couple gas stations that have them, but, you know, we, we, we think about that, and that's kind of how it is with the spiritual life. We just need to be plugged into the Lord. The Lord's the outlet. We just need to plug into Him and get that strength, get charged up, if you will, get renewed. Notice the rest of these verses, if you will. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Did you notice what I was talking about? He says, put on, or finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Why? Because all this other ungodliness is still there, and it's going to be raging a war against you. It's going to be attacking from all sides in every direction in your life. And he said, so just get plugged in. What does he say to plug into? Well, he says in verse 18, pray by prayer and the word of God. 
just getting into the Word of God, getting into a time of prayer with God, getting rejuvenated. We don't have to wait till Sundays and Wednesdays to plug in. Man, we can plug into God and plug into the Lord on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and then turn around the next week and do the very same thing because He wants you and I to plug into Him for some strength. Be strong in the Lord. You know, it encourages me when I see what we have in the Lord. Nothing I looked at is discouraging, is it? What do we got? To be able to stand fast in the Lord. We can stand firmly in the Lord. We can have the same eye in the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord. We've got boldness in the Lord. We have trust in the Lord. We are light in the Lord. And then we have strength. Maybe you just need some of that stuff today. Maybe you feel weak, feel your battery is draining big or draining out. Plug into Jesus Christ. Let him charge your battery today. Let him, let him charge your life, if you would, and get plugged in to the Savior. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Father, we're grateful to you for your love and mercy to us.